Okay, the next dial indicator uh, type that we're going to use is a C-clamp base dial indicator. This is a snap-on GA3400. The vice grip mount dial indicator that I showed you uh, in another video was the GA3634. This dial indicator I don't use very often, but sometimes I have to use it because there's no place to put a... Uh, vice grip style dial indicator base without damaging a component and this has a c-clamp base which will not damage uh, anything if you treat it treat it with care so let's open this up and see what we have inside we've got the piece of foam in here that keeps everything from rattling around and holds the dial indicator in place please keep that with the box don't put it in oil don't throw it away we have a c-clamp right here, the C-clamp base itself that we can clamp onto anything uh, that we want. And it has a, some threaded holes, one on each side and one on the end that just like the uh, magnetic, magnetic base dial indicator, we have these rods that we can screw into either the, the end or the sides of the dial indicator. Uh, there's an extension rod. There are two rods. One of them can be an extension for the other one so we can get an extra long reach if necessary. And we can thread that into the end or either side of this C-clamp style uh, dial indicator base. All right. Now, this dial indicator uh, is a very precise, uh, very expensive little tool. Uh, this one is also jeweled, and this measures in one thousandth of an inch increments, 0 .001 uh, inches. So rather than half of a thousandth of an inch, like the larger dial indicators I showed you in the other uh, videos I have, the magnetic base and the vice grip style, this one only measures in one thousandth of an inch increments. It has a plunger right here with a, a tip that's removable and we can change tips, uh, even put extensions on there if we, if we want to for uh, taking measurements. It also has a cap here on the top that if we unscrew that cap, set it off to the side, there's a hole there where we can stick a special adapter, this adapter right here. This is for sticking down into small holes and measuring some back and forth play where let's say that this plunger and the dial indicator assembly itself is too big to stick down in where you want to take a measurement you can screw in this uh, small hole uh, tool and to screw it in you have to push down about halfway on this plunger because there's a notch that this small bore or the small hole tool has to screw into. And if you get it positioned just right, then we can thread this aluminum housing uh, in all the way. If it's not positioned right, like right here, as you try to screw it in, there'll be a gap right there. You can see the gap. So you have to push in, wiggle it around a little bit to where it can go all the way in. So now, this dial indicator has really it has two plungers. We've got the one on the back. I'll push it right now, and you can see that the, the needle will move. But we also have the one on the top here. If I tilt that back, it makes the needle move also. And it pulls in that plunger. So it's, it just connects to the plunger on the inside, and it's handy for reaching down into small holes where you need to take some sort of a measurement.
So right here I have a front axle cutaway from a Toyota Tundra and I've cut away this material right here just to show how the front differential works. But normally of course that would not be cut away but you would still need a, a way to reach in and measure the backlash on these teeth. The way you do that is right here on the side of the differential is the oil drain plug. Well believe it or not you're gonna have to take that oil drain plug out and insert this style of a dial indicator uh, to measure the backlash on this axle housing because you cannot get to it any other way. So you have to reach down through some sort of a hole like that with this style of dial indicator to take that measurement. Now of course this style of dial indicator has this shaft here on the bottom, it's a solid shaft, that we could put in another style of dial indicator base, a vice grip base, a magnetic base, but we've got the C-clamp style base that it comes with right here. So let's get this set up just to take a, a measurement here. Uh, let's say uh, we're going to clamp just right here on the on the upper edge of the differential housing. So I've got it clamped in place. We can thread on one of the rods here. You need to screw that in tight by hand. Don't use any um, pliers or any other tools on it. And then we've got a clamp, and we've got a clamp right here that is going to clamp onto it's going to clamp onto the threaded rod right here. And then it has a hole in it right there where our dial indicator plunger uh, can come in and be tightened, tightened down. So let me tighten that up here just a little bit. There we go. And so now we've got a clamp, an extension rod. Sometimes I'll use this clamp to tighten the extension rod just a little bit. And then the, the dial indicator, um, itself and then of course we would either position the little hole tool down in a hole or position the plunger on the back of the dial indicator uh, over whatever it is we're going to take a, a measurement on. Um, in this case uh, I don't have clearance or room to take a measurement uh, with the back of the dial indicator but I might be able to uh, take a measurement with the front of it. If I put an extension rod on right here, just like that. Put the clamp back on and we'll position our plunger right here right up against the tooth oh, I gotta get the tip of the plunger right on the tooth at as much of a right angle as as possible just like that Okay, so watching the dial indicator needle movement and the hole extension laying on the side of one of the teeth of the ring gear, let's see if we can get a measurement. Let me load it first. Okay, so I've got a load on it. I'm going to zero the dial indicator. So we've preloaded the, the plunger, we've zeroed it, and now we'll pull it, the ring gear forward. 
and backwards. And we are going between zero and seven thousandths of an inch. Each of the large numbered marks are ten thousandths of an inch. So we're getting the same seven thousandths of an inch measurement. So we got the same seven thousandths of an inch measurement with this C-clamp style dial indicator with the hole, small hole attachment, as we did with the magnetic base dial indicator and the vice grip style dial indicator. So I've used three different dial indicator mountings and dial indicators, well, two different dial indicators, um, to get the same reading. So in my class, if you are done taking this measurement, but you're going to take another measurement, then take the dial indicator clamp off and very carefully set, lay the whole thing in the box with the plunger sticking up so that we don't damage the, the plunger and set it, set it off to the side until you're ready to use it again. If you're done using it for the day, then please disassemble everything, put it back how you found it in the box, put the, the foam element over it, and put it away.